Saludos a toda la afición de Lucha Libre Online. Este que les habla es Michael Morales Torres, integrante del equipo de Lucha Libre Online. Y tenemos el enorme privilegio de presentarles a nuestra invitada especial en la tarde de hoy, representando a la dinastía Yang, luchadora de NWA, y representando también a las Free Babes. Yassi Yang llega aquí por primera vez a Lucha Libre Online. Yassi, es un privilegio para nosotros tenerte. ¿Cómo te encuentras? ¿Cómo estás? Uh, bien, gracias por tenerme. ¿Y tú? Todo bien acá en Puerto Rico. Para quienes no lo sepan, ya sí sabe español, eh, pero va a optar por hacer la entrevista en inglés porque se siente más cómoda en el idioma, pero todo lo que estamos diciendo, ella lo está entendiendo. Así que that's part, that's part of the dynamic. Jassy understands English and Spanish as well. Uh, Jassy, I wanted to start this interview asking you how, I mean, your father is Jimmy Wong Yang, but how did your passion for pro wrestling started? Like who or what? hope you enough to decide to do this for a living so just growing up around it and then when I had the chance to go to Japan when I was 15 I had that moment there and thinking like I can travel for a living and have fans and get paid and stuff like that and that really hooked me in and it was just a great experience and that's what really started my passion perfect so you mentioned something key Uh, which is going to be our next question. You had the opportunity to debut in Japan when you were just 15 years old, a little teenager, having the opportunity to make her debut at the other side of the world. Let's go step by step. The first thing is, how did this opportunity came around? Like, how did this happen? So my dad's <laughs> old partner, Kaz Hayashi, they wanted to do a reunion of the Jung Dragons. So they called him and asked if he went, if he would come. And he said, can I bring my daughter? They said, for sure, she can have a spot in the match. So then that's how we got there. And then I ended up doing the spot in the match and it was really cool. So let's go to Japan. Let's sit there. Your father uh, requested his partner to bring his daughter in to do a spot in the match. But you travel to Japan. Let's focus on, on the daily life basis the food, the culture, the language, everything is different. How do you manage to work with that barrier? So it was, it was crazy. It was a 12 hour flight there. And I didn't know anything about Japan at all. So when we first got there, it was like kind of a culture shock, but it was really cool to me, like how many people there are there because I was from Ohio and then seeing how many people are like there. And then the food, So when the first night, my dad was like, we have to be Japanese for the, this week while we're here. So Kaz Hayashi and Ozawa took us to a Japanese, a cult, like Japanese food place. And they made us try, made me try everything, but they didn't tell me what it was until after I tried it. So it was pig tongue, pig stomach, pig intestines, pig feet, all of that. And I was like, It was just so chewy and it was boiled, not fried. And I did not like it at all. So your experience for the first time with Japanese food was definitely not good or not what you were expecting. Yeah, not what I was, not what I'm used to. The stomach actually wasn't as bad. I could eat that, but I couldn't eat the rest. So then I was like, I can't eat this. I need like chicken or something to fill me up. So they brought me out a chicken with a raw egg on it and like cracked it right there. And I was like, well, oh. and then the next day I asked for KFC. Jesus Christ. Like well, once you had, like you thought you were going to have a decent meal, they just crack a raw egg on top of it. <laughs> So the KFC, let's go to that part. You, uh, so you want a chicken, you had the opportunity to experience chicken. KFC is different in that side of the world as well. So for you, did that basically made the deal for you? Like, were you okay with that food? Not at least, at least, I mean, at least it's not a raw egg on top of the chicken there. Yeah, it was a little different. It's just like really smaller portions. So it was like kids meals, but I loved melon soda that it came with. That's what oh. they're like right there. It's like a green Fanta. But I had KFC, Burger King, Denny's, Subway, all in Japan. <laughs> <laughs> so all the fast foods you could, all the fast food you could. Let me translate this to Spanish briefly. Jassi Yang hace su debut cuando tenía 15 años en Japón. ¿Qué la capturó a ella para ingresar a la industria de los libres? Bueno, llegar a Japón y darse cuenta que ella podía viajar, que ella podía vivir de esto, que ella podía recorrer el mundo y seguir los pasos de su padre. ¿Cómo surge la oportunidad de ella debutar en Japón? Sencillo. Eh, su papá se iba a reunir con su compañero para volver a formar los Young Dragons. Eh, Jimmy le dice a él, mira, 
mi hija me gustaría que viniera conmigo para hacer algo, ¿se puede? Él dice, claro que sí, trae la nena para hacerle un spot. Primer día en Japón, 12 horas de vuelo para el otro lado desde Ohio. De momento la nena llega allí, se siente y su papá le dice, vamos a hacer japoneses por esta semana, incluyendo la comida. Ok, me dieron las cosas más raras, nunca le dijeron hasta después que eran eh, piernas de puerco, eh, estómago de puerco, varias cosas. Él dice, la comida no era frita, era hervida. Entonces el sabor y la textura tal vez no era como que lo que ella esperaba. Pidió pollo, perfecto, me dieron pollo con un huevo crudo encima. Fue como que ¡Ah! no era lo que esperaba. De momento pues tiene la oportunidad de ir a KFC, hacer sus cosas, la comida era, le servían menos comida, eh, te servía una soda de melón, que eso le gustó. Eh, pero sí, probó toda la comida de Japón, no le encantó en ese momento, así que vivió de fast food el resto de esa semana. Now let's focus on, on the show, you had the opportunity to make your debut. How do you felt knowing that you were actually going to follow your father's footsteps at that point? How do you felt knowing that you were going to make your debut so many miles away from home? Yeah, it was crazy. I didn't think about it all like that much going into it. But then like right before I'm about to go out, I get super nervous. I start drinking a lot of water and I'm just thinking about everything in my head. And it's just crazy. And then at, once I go out there, it's like the adrenaline coming in and it just feels natural. Yeah. So once you came out there, you had the opportunity to experience the Japan crowd for the first time. And for the people that are not used to them, it can be a cultural shock once again because uh, they're often silent. Uh, they are more, you know, the, oh, the, the amazed part, the clap when they, it is extremely necessary. Like it is a different audience. So for you going out there and, you know, facing basically the Japanese culture in, in your own skin, how do you felt, you know, uh, experiencing the Japanese fans for the first time? It was great. They're like really appreciative of wrestling and that was different. And I kind of, I love that a lot. And I really want to go back because that was a great experience. And like their reactions to when I did the head to the channel more, they're like, oh. I was like, yes. So, yeah. so you I'm fight, yeah, yeah, you could hook them. Do you remember or do you recall your father seeing you performing at that moment? Because Jimmy has done this all his life, but another thing is allowing his daughter, his treasure, his baby, going inside that ring and risking her life, basically. So was he okay with this from the beginning? And how do you, you know, what do you recall from his words after this, uh, the, after this spot you, you experienced in Japan? So he was a really good coach. It was really hard, like, learning all the moves and stuff. And, yeah, so... There, when I got into the ring, I was kind of tunnel vision. I wasn't paying attention to my dad or anything outside. But after, he was like, oh, my God, that was so good. And it was really great getting that from my dad after going through all the tra hard training and stuff. And then him being proud of what I did do was like a real live moment. It was really good. So. Perfect. I'll translate this briefly to Spanish. Ya si hace su debut en Japón a los 15 años, es su primera audiencia enfrentándose. ¿Cómo se sintió ella saliendo para allá? Obvio, tenía nervio, bebía mucha agua, estaba nerviosa, como todo el mundo. Es su primera lucha, es parte de la experiencia. De momento sale, hace su spot y como que cuando hace la tijereta, todo el mundo como que oh, se sorprendió. Obviamente la audiencia de Japón es bien silente, son muy respetuosos, como ella dice. Eh, aprecian mucho la cultura y la industria de la lucha libre, aprecian mucho el trabajo del luchador y eso significó mucho para ella entonces su papá, eh, el hecho de que estuviera viéndolo, pues, su papá la respaldó mucho él fue el que la entrenó eh, y tener su respaldo básicamente en este proceso fue, fue clave para poder continuar en, en esta industria Let's go back to Ohio, you train there along with your father and I believe at that moment your father's partner or your father's girlfriend so how was, you know Another th one thing is seeing your dad basically doing it and seeing, I don't know, Melina, Mickey James, among many other gals doing it. But another thing completely different is experiencing it. How was your first time kissing the canvas? So the first time I almost broke my arm. Oh, you know, shit. During basketball season. So I had to lie about it and say I fell down rebounding. So, yeah, it took me out of basketball for two weeks, but and it scared me to death of the head scissors, but my dad doesn't, and it looks so easy for him. And then I get in there, and it's terrifying and so hard. All, like, the training, like, the squats where we have to do, like, a hundred or more squats, it's crazy. And then wrestling against my dad's girlfriend can be kind of awkward. 
<laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you almost broke your arm in your first try. How did you got over that fear and went back and do that, you know, do it again until it, it actually worked? Um, so just do it slow. And my dad was like, well, you're not going to do that again because you know how bad it hurts. So just don't put your arms down. So just close my eyes and do it. <laughs> just close my eyes and go for it. So you finally did it. You finally achieved the move you wanted to. So that's basically your first milestone inside the wrestling industry, achieving the move your dad did. Did you felt any pressure at all being a second generation wrestler, being the daughter of Jimmy Wong Yang, being, you know, having a legacy in your hands? Uh, yeah, he does a really cool moonsault and I really want to do a moonsault so bad, but I am terrified of heights. And when I get up there, I start shaking. I'm like, oh my gosh, but I can do it on a trampoline. I can do a backflip on a trampoline or something like that. But when I when it's the top rope, I get so scared. And I really want to be able to do that because that was his move and to carry that on and stuff. And he's good at his character and everything. And I really want to be good at mine and like embody that too. Yeah. Yeah, because he connected with the crowd. It didn't matter if he was in the first, mid, or last match. He literally connected from every single second once he got out. Uh, so you got the opportunity to see him as a role model. Uh, let's go back to your childhood a little bit. You had the opportunity to experience, you know, SmackDown or Raw or whatever your dad was at the point. Uh, and seeing him wrestle or being backstage. How was, you know, for you as a kid to be a backstage In the WWE, for example, how was that experience for you? So when I was backstage, I was really, at this time I was little, I didn't understand everything, but I was really terrified of CM Punk because he <laughs> shaved that one girl's head and I was terrified he was going to shave my hair. I was so little, I did not understand. So I'd hide behind my dad, cry, everything. And then watching my dad wrestle, I would get so scared because I'm thinking, oh my God, my dad's getting killed. He's going to die. But Mickey James took really good care of me in the back and she would take me to the Divas locker room and I would hang out with all of them. And it was really cool. Perfect. Let me translate this to Spanish. Vámonos otra vez al principio. Jassy logra eh, perfeccionar su movida a las tijeretas mismas que hace su papá. En su primer intento casi se rompe el brazo. Perdió dos semanas de su equipo de baloncesto que pudo haber... Desde, mira, me lastimé jugando baloncesto. Mintió para poder eh, continuar en el equipo. Se lesionó el brazo. Eh, de momento se da cuenta como que esto no es tan fácil como mi papá lo hace ver hasta que practica, practica, practica y finalmente le sale la movida le preguntamos sobre eh, ser luchadora de segunda generación, tener esa presión de su mano y dice como que mi papá es un monstruo hermoso, yo quiero hacer esto pero tengo miedo a las alturas eh, de momento tratar de seguir sus pasos o su legado en esta industria eh, si sí asusta un poco pero es parte de, de la experiencia y de los retos a los que se enfrenta tuvo la experiencia de estar backstage muchas veces en la WWE, le tenía miedo a Cien Punk porque en aquel momento estaba lo del Straight Edge Society en donde él le recortaba la cabeza y ya pensaba que ah, Cien Punk estaba recortando las cabezas, afeitando las cabezas a los niños pequeños o a las niñas pequeñas y le tenía miedo así que se escondía detrás del papá Mickey James la cuidaba mucho en el tiempo que estaba backstage y, y compartía con todo y su experiencia siempre fue muy positiva en este ambiente mientras iba creciendo So let's go back to that full circle moment Mickey James was the one taking care of you backstage once you were a kid you know so you could see your dad wrestling and protecting you from the evil yeah. head shaving CM Punk um, and she was the person that actually granted you your first big opportunity and I'm talking about NWA 18 years old like you are extremely young and you were granted a huge opportunity in your career how did that opportunity happen initially so it happened when she tweeted like looking for superstars for her thing and someone said Jazzy Yang and then she's like okay Jimmy call me so then she they talked on the phone and then we scheduled a meeting in Nashville where in her house so we went there She said she wanted me to be a part of it. And it was crazy. It was like full circle. She took care of me back then. And now she's going to take care of me now. Take me into another locker room full of women. And it was just great to be a part of that and be a part of stuff with her. Because looking back on the stuff she did is crazy. And then her giving me the opportunity to be a part of that was just full circle. So you got the opportunity to go to Mickey's house in Nashville. And this time you were not along with her as as a child you were as a peer as a, as an equal with her to have that opportunity to sit down and negotiate that first opportunity along with your father 
how did it was for you? Like you are not the little girl she's protecting backstage anymore. You are you're her partner. You are her peer in this industry. Mm -hmm. So basically, I just had to show that I am here and I am ready and I am prepared to go out and show out for her and make her look good. And that's what really sealed the deal because I'm showing her that I'm ready and she wanted to give me the opportunity because she says that nobody would be where they are without the opportunity, without an opportunity they were given. And she gave me that opportunity. I'm really grateful for her. So Mickey didn't just gave you an opportunity. She gave you a gimmick. She gave you a stable. She gave you other gals to protect you as well. And I'm talking about the free babes, second generation wrestlers, uh, Hollywood, uh, Haley J, I believe is, is her name. Um, Miranda Gordy, daughter of Terry Bam Bam Gordy and Jazzy Yang, all the three of you together, whose idea was, you know, to pair you up and how do you felt knowing that you were not going along, you were going to debut as part of a stable? So it was Mickey James' idea. She texted my dad and said, I have a great idea. Miranda Gordy, her dad, it would be great to have all three second generation wrestlers together in a group. And it'd be more comfortable for me since it's such a big pay-per-view that I would have these people that knew more and more experience beside me. And we had never met each other. So when we got there, it was kind of like a fresh start. And we were going to just see if it worked. And it, we, it did. And we gelled really well. And we pulled off a great match. Let's go to that event, NWA Empower, the first all-women's event in the history of NWA. For you as a woman, how did it felt to be a part of such a huge accolade in the history of women's pro wrestling? Because things were not always as they are today. Brian Panties matches, gimmick weird matches, the famous pee breaks, or, you know, all the things that women had to go through inside this industry so they could finally reach their spot today. And thankfully, they finally got there. They finally arrived. They finally were granted the opportunity as an equal. An all women's pay per view, Jazzy Yang is a part of it. How did it feel for you? It was great, like seeing all the legends before me, everything they had to go through, I respect them so much. And I wasn't even like technically there for that era, but looking back at it and seeing all this, the fight they had to go through, like not being taken serious. And then all of us there doing that pay-per-view with that big crowd and all the people talking about it, trending on Twitter. It was just so great and such a powerful thing for women. And I really hope we can do more of it. Let's go backstage to that event. You're seeing to your left, there's Alondra Blaze. Here is Gal Kim. There's Awesome Kong. Over there is Mickey James. Melina is behind you. Like all the gals you watch while growing up or at a point uh, you either saw it on the network or whatever, you, you know, they were there. The, the, like the woman that basically created a whole revolution by tossing a title belt in a trash can on the other show. Yeah. Mickey James, the legend, future Hall of Famer, like, All of them were there and you are in the same locker room as them. Like, how do you felt knowing that you were basically on the big leagues? Like you, this is it. I made it. It was crazy. And Melina, she, her and my dad are really close. So she's always giving me talks about boys, not trusting stupid boys. Gail Cam's really close. My dad, I met her when I was 10 years old. When we did some show, my dad did some show in New York city when I met her and she's my Korean auntie so yeah that was cool and then Kong she's so amazing she was in GLOW went to Japan forever and it was just like and Medusa she was my um director or producer for our match and like her input is so good and it was just crazy being in the same locker room as those women who came before me and they were great in the ring yeah it was really crazy and really exciting to be with them you mentioned something key Medusa, Alondra Blaze was your producer. Yeah. How do you felt, you know, sitting down the tree of knowledge with her? So it's kind of nerve wracking at first, but she's actually a really cool person and she makes you feel really comfortable and making us all feel comfortable getting our, she let us talk and do everything. And then she just gave us little tips and notes. And that was really cool of her to do. So Let's go to what you actually did there. You were part of the tournament to crown the first uh, or, or this generation's uh, NWA women's tag team champions. You were on a corner for a moment, but you also had the opportunity to wrestle over there. 
you bit an ankle. <laughs> you literally yeah. bit an ankle. <laughs> like you go inside the ring, yeah. like what went through your head to go there and got, were you literally an alligator bite into, I believe, Red Velvet's ankle? Anything to win, anything to win. And if you've seen The Last Dragon, a Barry Gordy's The Last Dragon, show enough is the greatest hill ever. And that was his move. He would fight everybody in the scene in the movie theater and he takes them down, moves his ankle and just bites him. And I just, I don't know what came over me. I just wanted to win. It's really bad. And I was like, it's there. And then just went for it. <laughs> So you were part of the NWA at that moment. Hopefully we can see you again in the company. Uh, have you received any other further notice? Because NWA is still taping, like, a lot of eyes are in the company right now after the 73rd anniversary and NWA and Power. Are you still in contact with the company? Um, I'm still in contact with Mickey James, but not the company specifically right now. But we'll see what comes around. I think they come to Atlanta sometime in December. So we'll see what happens. Let's so hope to see you there. Jassy, what's your main goal inside this industry? Where do you want to reach? What's the place you want to be in the near future or in the long distance future? Like what's, what's your goal or your goals at, with plural? So first I want to master the craft and all that, but I want to travel the world, have an action figure, be in a video game. I really want to make it to the final level. I think that's WWE. And like once you're there, like you're on top of the world, basically. And I really want to make it there. I want to do, travel the whole world, go everywhere, see the world and everything like that. So you want to be a Trotamundos, basically, just like your dad did in his time. Uh, how connected are you to your Asian or South Korean heritage? Um, uh, a little bit. I love watching K-dramas, and I love K-pop. My little cousins love BTS. They love Butter, Dynamite. And every time the song con comes on, they start dancing and going crazy. I love kimchi. I want to I learn Korean so bad. I'm trying really hard, like watching the shows and stuff. I know, hello, it's Anya Haseo. If you want to learn it. Can you so say you, it? Uh, well, I, in Korean, no, I know nothing about <laughs> Korean. Like, I'm horrible. <laughs> Anyang. Anyang. Yep, there you go. <laughs> Now you know how to say hello. I don't suck at all at, at this then. And then this is the heart. This is oh, their like, heart. Really? Yeah, that's like their new heart that they give out. That's that's nice. I didn't do so. I'm learning things today besides yeah. you. I'm learning something from South Korea, so which is really good. Jesse, you mentioned something key in this interview in the beginning is that you actually were a basketball player. Mm -hmm. I played volleyball, basketball, softball, but basketball was my true love. I love basketball. Why did you make the transition from basketball to pro wrestling? Uh, women in basketball don't actually get paid like uh, anything. So I really wanted to make a living pro wrestling. And then pro wrestling, it has its ups too. Getting to, they both travel the world, but wrestling, you get to be a character. And I love that part of it too. LeBron James, Michael Jordan, or Kobe Bryant, and why? Mm -hmm. I'd have to say LeBron James. Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, he's the best all-around player to me, and I, I love him. And I love his shoes. My first, my first <laughs> ever, like, good shoes were LeBron 12s, and I would wear them every single day to school, and that made me feel cool. <laughs> A little part of me died after your answer. So speaking of sports, you and your father had the opportunity to help society, to help kids uh, with uh, a program called, or an entity called Wrestling with, uh, for the Kiddos. Kids all around the world don't have the same resources as, you know, of, of other places in the States, in Puerto Rico, Mexico. It's, you know, it's different. And to be part of a team, You actually need to, to pay, to pay different fees, to buy clothing, to buy uniforms, to pay your fees. You know, it's expensive. So what inspired you and your father to help other, you know, others in wrestling for the kiddos? So sports fees are really high right now. And I, and sports can teach kids so many lessons. 
and I don't think money should stop a kid from learning like essential life lessons like teamwork, hard work, responsibility, and many more. So I really wanted to help them out and I love coaching and giving back to the kids. So that's when Wrestling for the Kid was, came about. And how do you felt knowing that other peers, other than, you know, you had the opportunity to wrestle along with your dad for the kiddos with guys like uh, Doug Gallows uh, before Festus, for example. Um, how do you felt knowing that other peers are supporting you in this project as well? It's great. It really shows that people do care about sports and they really think that it matters for kids and it's really important. And it's great having people like Festus, like put like help out with that and other people. It really it just helps the company and helps the kids and helps the world for the greater. So. I'll let me say something in Spanish as well. Wrestling for the Kiddos es una organización no benéfica que tiene Jazzy Yang y Jimmy Wan Yang hace un tiempo en donde le brinda la oportunidad a niños de escasos recursos a salir de ese camino que eventualmente podría llegar a sus vidas y elegir el camino del bien a través de técnicas como el deporte. Los costos del deporte, como ya dice, están bien elevados, son bastante complicados, sobre todo en Estados Unidos. Por eso nace el proyecto Wrestling for the Kiddos, en donde todos ustedes pueden hacer donación a través de paypal.me, paypal.me, slash wrestling for the kiddos. Eh, ahí lo pueden, eh, pueden ir directamente, respaldarlo, paypal.me, slash wrestling for the kiddos. Lo vamos a dejar aquí abajo en la descripción. Toda donación que ustedes hagan será bien recibida. Toda donación va a ser para una buena causa, sobre todo para estos niños de escasos recursos que quieren y tienen un sueño y muchas veces no saben cómo cumplirlo porque vienen de familias de escasos recursos, porque en su casa no se valora eso tal vez, o porque no se puede simplemente porque no tienen el dinero. Eh, ellos están ayudándolo, ellos están luchando por los niños, tanto Jimmy Wang Yang como Jazzy Yang. Eh, y pueden hacerlo a través de paypal.me slash wrestling for the kiddos. Y lo pueden buscar a sí mismo en Instagram y en Twitter. Y hasta en Facebook, wrestling for the kiddos. Lo pueden buscar a través de las redes sociales. Al igual que pueden buscar a Jazzy Yang a través de sus redes sociales. Está disponible como Jazzy Yang en Instagram. Jazzy Wang Yang en Twitter. Y Jazzy Wang Yang en Facebook. O sea, Jazzy Yang Instagram. Jazzy Wang Yang en Facebook y Twitter. Ahí, Twitter, ahí lo pueden verificar. Eh, y todo lo mismo para booking email, pueden comunicarse a través de sus redes sociales, eh, a través de Jazzy Yang, a través del DM o a través de su mismo padre, pero preferiblemente directamente a través de ella como Jazzy Yang eh, para bookings e información a través de, está disponible para luchar en todo el mundo. Jesse you're doing many things that are important in life right now, but I think the most important part is that you are constantly learning. You are learning in every experience you have. Uh, what's been the best, like the best advice you received inside this industry so far? Because you mentioned Melina, take care, like take care of boys, like you watch out from boys or something. But what do you think is the best advice you received so far in the wrestling industry? And if you've received one bad advice, which has been the worst? So the best advice, I think. Can I cuss on here? Of course, feel free to do it. So this one wrestler, Dylan McQueen, he was here. I was backstage. I was super nervous. And he was like, you know, even if you don't feel like a bad bitch, nobody out there knows it, knows that. So you can go out and you can be the baddest bitch and no one and everyone will believe in you because nobody knows what you're feeling back here. And that that just gave me a confidence boost. And I was like, dang. And I passed it on to someone else that empower. I, I said it and they're like, wow, that was good advice. And I love that advice from him. And he's such a nice person. And I actually slapped him out there, but he was great. <laughs> so, yeah, I love that advice from him. Have you received any bad advice inside the wrestling industry or not yet? You've been fortunate enough. Mm, someone said that uh, a hold, holds are stupid. And I was like, what? Like, who the fuck said that? Yeah, I don't, some random. Random. I don't even know the name. I was like, holds what they're like oh it's stupid when people tap out i was like have you ever been in one <laughs> but jesus christ the important part is that you didn't took that advice because yeah. you beat yeah. an ankle in your first pay-per-view match so <laughs> so you, you were good to go my next question is exactly that you had the opportunity to wrestle in a sold out crowd in st louis missouri but thousands of people were watching you all around the world Do you felt nervous at any moment knowing that you were actually now a role model, that you were actually now causing impact on the small little girls in her houses and little boys, that you were actually the people, most of the guys and gals 
growing up are watching now? Like, do you feel any pressure? Yeah, I feel pressure, especially when talking. I feel a lot of pressure because I don't want to say the wrong thing or offend anybody. So that can really get to me sometimes. But I'm just, once I'm out there, like on the stage, I can just turn it on. And like, once I'm out there, currently I can turn it on. But right before I'm getting so nervous thinking about everything that I'm about to do or going to do and thinking about what I say and if it's wrong or right or how people would take it. And that's the biggest The biggest pressure for me is talking. Jesse, before we go to our last question, I wanted to thank you so much for your time, as well as to, to Jimmy Wang Yang, your father, for making this possible. Uh, last but not least, what do you want your legacy to be inside this wrestling industry? What do you want people to remember you for? Like, you've only been here three years, you're 18 years old, but hell, Uh, Randy Orton once was uh, your where you are sitting today. Uh, he was learning. He was growing up as well as Mickey James, as well as Gail Kim, as well as Trish Stratus. Like, but to you as a young woman, what do you want your legacy to be inside this industry? I want my legacy to be a strong Asian American woman, and for little kids to know that they can look, they could be in the same spot I am, and if they work hard, they will be. They're just like me. Perfect, Jazzy. I wanted to thank you so much for your time. Always wishing you success in your career with wrestling for the kiddos as well and with your personal life. And thank you so much for your time. It's been yeah. a pleasure. Muchas gracias. Gracias a ti. Y vamos, let's wrap this up en español. Esta fue Jazzy Yang y Michael Morales Torres para Lucha Libre Online, la marca número uno de pro wrestling y combat sports en español. And before we go, who's the Yang? Jazzy, yay. <laughs> Take care, Jazzy. Thank you.